so i have spoken to a couple people and most of the time they're not exactly sure if they are in the right career path or you know they enjoy what they actually do and today we're actually going to be talking about some of these gap years and career switches that happen for people and today i have blessing here blessing is a lawyer now creative in fintech industry and she's here to you know share some of these experiences based on her own um what would i call it personal stories personal stories on how she had career switches and all of that so welcome blessing thank you let's cheers Uh, to that and oh happy birthday today is actually blessing's birthday thank you (laughs) so how has it been like for you you know as a career person like let's even talk generic terms like what has it been like being in whatever industry that you've been in so regardless of what experience you choose to have like i mean you can just be like just even being an adult like working like having the whole work experience and how has it been before we talk about you know the details of what you actually do and how you transition from this to that so yeah um i'll say it's been exciting okay for some reason i think i always looked forward to growing up as children i think we all did we all did <laughs> at some point like you just thought okay i would have more freedom mm-hmm. to do stuff that i wanted to do and i've gotten to that point now of course it comes with like ups and downs some things Definitely. go according to plan some things don't go according to plan but like in all of this i've just tried to focus on what i want to do mm-hmm. what i think is my own future and then try to create that path for myself okay so when you say create that part for yourself like are there factors that you know you've always had in mind that would always influence what your choices would be i don't think i would say always had in mind Mm -hmm. maybe somewhere in my subconscious it was just right there but it wasn't the primary thing i was facing Mm -hmm. at the time so i know that there are things that i'm passionate about and when push comes to shove if you leave me yeah. i would go back to that thing again so if like nothing else was happening yeah, that's what that I'll, thing it's that always that thing on. exactly so what do you do right now so right now i'm a creative and communications associate at a fintech company mm-hmm. that practically involves a lot of writing communications generally and content creation creative directing you know all of digital marketing as well mm. yeah so that's what it is primarily yeah so do you actually enjoy doing this yeah i actually love my job because i mean i've always known you to be a lawyer so yes. this is like hearing that you've actually transitioned now yeah. like what has the experience been like like did you i don't know did you get bored of law or is it just something that you wanted to just the opportunity came and you're like okay maybe this is something i can do or you know explore so what like came about the entire switch from being a lawyer and moving into communications and content creation and whatever okay let me let me take us back a bit to like secondary school so Mm -hmm. secondary school when you're getting to senior secondary you start to choose whether you want to be an art student science science student or or, exactly Mm -hmm. so at that point my school was very dramatic we had career week where they had experts come in to tell us what a particular career was mm-hmm. like and then they sent us on internships in gs3 so you would mm-hmm. go and intern at the place that you think you want to work at mm-hmm. the time i actually wanted to teach so i wanted to teach literature and english and i went to intern at a primary school as a teacher and After I did that, I filled my logbook. I did all of that. Was like, you know what? I'm going to be an art student because I want to. In JS3, exactly. That's very deep. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We had like logbooks. It was serious stuff. We'll take like tests and quizzes and all those things. So it wasn't just, oh, choose whatever you want. Mm -hmm. It was actually. actually needed to be accountable for it. Exactly. So I said, okay, I want to teach English and literature. And my dad was like, okay, it's not like I'm trying to stop you from doing what you want to Mm -hmm. do but why not do law instead because law will give you wider opportunities so with law you could actually go back like law as a first degree you could go back and get a master's in english or literature Mm -hmm. or if you want to teach so much you could teach law so that's how i ended up in law it wasn't necessarily my first choice yeah exactly Mm -hmm. yeah so it was like art students if they ask you what you want to be you say lawyer so it was just like okay since law has more opportunities let's do law does it 
that's what I was told at the time. So it's like if you do law, you sort of can go back and do the wow. other yeah, the mm-hmm. other courses. So um that was why I ended up in law. And then I stayed there for five years and then went to law school for one year. And I actually thought, oh, this isn't a bad career path. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to be an essay and like many people. I wanted to be a judge. But each time I thought about being a judge, I was like, I would also like to have my own YouTube channel. And I don't think judges can have their YouTube channel. So I was like, you know, that was, oh, they're supposed to lead a very quiet, quiet and private life. They are not supposed to be in the public eye as much. Yeah. So because you have people from the public come to the courts Mm -hmm. and you need to be a neutral party. So you constantly have to seclude yourself. Yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just thought if I became a judge, it will impede whatever creative outlet I was going to get. And you were already having the urge to be creative. Yeah, exactly. So it's always been there. Like I always wanted to be a creative. My secondary school project, I wrote a book Mm -hmm. and published it. That's why I wanted to do English literature, something that had to do with creative writing. Um, When I was young, I used to read a lot one of my favorite things to do was go to the bookstore like i would be very excited that i'm getting a new book Mm -hmm. so i've always had that flair it was just okay when it was time to be professional in quotes my parents thought okay do law so that i will give you more opportunities that's what they they thought yeah Mm -hmm. and then so that's how i ended up you know as a lawyer yeah and then what happened was i worked with a law firm for nyc after law school for a year and during my work with them it was mostly corporate law we didn't really go to court Mm -hmm. but while i worked with them i just kept questioning if this was what i really wanted to do if in the next five years this is where i want to be so when i was questioning it i started thinking is it that i'm lazy like okay it's a lot of work so is that why i want to quit but my dad was like okay just calm down and think about where you want to be in the next five years the same person that told you exactly (laughs) (laughs) so Mm -hmm. um i i like actually thought about it and i was like in the next five years i don't want to be a senior lawyer i don't want to be an san even if i wanted to be a judge mm-hmm. i still would want to like write and do my creative stuff on the side which i can't really do as a judge so it's so like i'll to have to let go of yeah of career. that dream of being a judge or being a lawyer to say mm-hmm. okay this is clearly what i'm passionate about yeah. and in the next five years i would want to have my own creative company so i'm going to move to the creative industry, industry. yeah so that was what's inspired yeah exactly so do you actually like how do you feel right now like transitioning from you know the entire law foundation yeah. and experience to now coming into communications creative because i'm actually a communications yeah person, you know? <laughs> so i actually understand like yeah. some of the terms that you've used but i'm just trying to picture what it's been like okay so because they are two different yeah things. clearly i had no idea before i decided to make the switch mm-hmm. and I had worked with this law firm that was very tasking, like everything was very overwhelming for me. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I just needed to let go of all that weight Mm -hmm. before I actually made that switch. So I decided to take a gap year in 2021. Mm -hmm. And so what I did when I decided to take the gap year was tell my parents, oh, I quit my law job because I actually quit. And I'm, I'm like, I quit my law job, but I'm looking for a new job. I didn't really want to look for a new job. I just wanted to rest. Yeah. I wanted to just create, write, consume creative content, just relax. But then it was just like, you can't really quit your job. Then just say you're coming home to sit down. That doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I'm looking for a new job. And so during that period, it was a battle between focusing on my creative stuff and helping out at my mom's school. Because it's like, okay, since you said you're looking for a new job, while yeah. you're looking for the new job, you come and be working here. Doing. Exactly. And I kept, I kept trying to explain to them that I don't really want to do this work, even though it's good work and it's yeah. nice that I can help children and all of that. But I want to focus on my own creative outlets, mm. what I'm trying to build. But it's not easy for other people to understand that. Yeah, especially because exactly especially because they can't see exactly what you're talking about. And the fact that you you didn't exactly tell them that you did not want to work. Yeah, exactly. So to them they might see it as, you know, or I'm sure they saw it as 
she's trying to look for a new job yeah. parents are always worried or concerned about your mental state like yeah. oh it's because my mom i remember my mom used to say ah this type of thing can drive somebody to depression she uses words like that yeah so i just always imagine that parents would want to like make sure that you don't feel bored you're not feeling sad that your mates are working yeah. and you're not but yeah. you exactly did not tell them yeah. that it's not like i'm looking for a job. job i just want to like have this but then did you even feel like you should have just been that honest like to just tell them that this is what it I was I think I should have mm-hmm. I think I should have given them that like I sort of made the decision for them I just thought oh, if I tell them they'll be like mm, you should look for a job so yeah. I just said okay I'm looking for a job but I think if I was actually open mm-hmm. and I had said oh I'm actually here cuz I want to focus on my creative journey mm-hmm. I think they would have respected that cuz my parents are actually pretty chill so even when I said I quit my job they were in, they didn't freak out. They were not like, ah, what do you mean quit your job? <laughs> After six years of law or something like yeah. that. They were actually very calm. So they were trying to understand. So I do think that I should have given them that. Mm-hmm. I should have given them that, yeah. um, like the right mm-hmm. to choose whether, like just let them know. Regardless, they would have been supportive. Yeah, exactly. I so right now, so. how do you feel? Like, because I know you just mentioned, you know, how you, when you were still working in yeah. law firms, you always had to question if this is what you really wanted to yeah. do. Or if this, like in five years time, like where would you want to be? So now that you've actually now found yourself in a position that you've always thought about, like how does it feel? Do you feel some level of contentment, fulfillment? I do feel very good. I feel okay. very confident. I don't think I felt as confident in the legal career Space, yeah. as I feel here. And the truth is, I'm not even an expert or a professional. Mm. I'm literally just starting to learn. But I feel confident because the passion is what's driving me. So f- I think that's what makes the difference even yeah. in my work. It's like I would go beyond and above just because I'm that passionate yeah. about it. So I feel confident. I feel content. Mm. I feel very content. Con- as yeah. a content creator. <laughs> yeah exactly pun intended i feel content (laughs) as a content creator (laughs) yeah so um what did i want to say just now i don't know what it is with law i almost studied law by the way so i know i kind of understand what you mean by the whole go to school for five years yeah the one thing that actually made me not study law i thought about how first of all i always had a passion in communications and back then in secondary school too I used to be in press club, photography club. I was in like, press club as well. Uh-huh. So you see, they are very similar <laughs> yeah. traits. So I used to do all those things. And then part of being in press club, I used to be in charge of interviews. So it's like, you know, schools, magazines, schools, yeah. this, who is going to give the speech in a, on assembly on Monday. So I always had that. I think that's where my own public relations started. Because yeah. communications, as you know, is very broad. Yeah. There are areas of specialization and just, I never liked broadcasting. Even and I uni. like broadcasting. I so used to broadcast. I was telling a friend last week that yeah. it's so funny how the one thing that, or rather most of the things that I ran away from back then in school are things that I'm doing right now because huh. how am I hosting a podcast yeah. when I never wanted radio or TV? Yeah. So like I wanted to just focus on corporate communications, public relations, advertising and all the background work, content creation, yeah. scheduling, strategy, and all that. So for me, like, I've always had the passion as well. I feel like growing up, things that I grew up doing kind of, yeah. like, foiled the interest. And then when you got to that stage, I'm like, so I'll go to school for five years. And then I'll not go to law school six yeah. years. And then I'll now, like, Serve, I don't know why, yeah. but the moment I needed to write jam and all of that, like, when I was choosing my subjects, it's just, I just said, you know what, no. I'm going for, you know, media, mass yeah. communication and whatever. And I know it was hard because, first of all, my parents, my dad, to be precise, never wanted me to be in art class oh. because they used to see me as an A student. Yeah. And for them, any A student should be in science because yeah. biology was compulsory. So it's like my own secondary school in SS1, we were doing almost all the subjects. So it's in SS2, you get to actually now choose your... Okay. So in SS1, when I was doing biology, you choose between chemistry, chemistry and physics. physics. Yeah. So it's not my fault that I used to pass and get A's. And to my dad, is like, you're already doing chemistry, you're already yeah. doing biology. Be taking physics classes and go to this. You should be... He wanted me to be a doctor. 
and for the, like two, the first two years like it was crazy honestly till i got to sst and my vice principal had to call my dad to school to tell him leave this girl alone wow. she's already here like he was very you must go to yeah. science that every day i'm going to school, I'll be crying because i was in boarding school so it's like wow. you know that whole that speech you hear yeah. before they go and drop you in school yeah. when your results comes yeah. and it's like these are the courses because i was doing geography like you know all those science yeah. related you know courses economics and it's like you're doing so well you're getting a's just add that physics and yeah. go to science i'm like no i mean i'm very stubborn yeah that has always been a thing so yeah i'm happy that i didn't let the pressure get to me because yeah. I, I think i probably would have gotten to that phase where it's like huh what am i doing here this yeah. is not what i want to do i was forced to be yeah. here. yeah because for you now it's like okay i was made to choose this because it's like as an art student this yeah. should be the a thing that you should do yeah because i remember back then too for me it was like since you now really want to be in the arts yeah. why not go for law yeah so i had different different conflicts yeah but i'm just happy that where i am right now yeah is where i wanted to be and yeah. it's been quite a journey but the sacrifices are worth it and then the profession has also opened opportunities for me too because yeah. like like you said the passion always drives that's something yeah. that like constantly keeps me going like even when it doesn't look like you might get to where you want to be but yeah. the fact that what you're doing is intentional for you like it just always works out so yeah i understand but then again like i said i don't know what it is with law but a lot of people that i know that are lawyers or studied law yeah they are not exactly practicing or doing other things because even back then in uni like people that i know that graduated from same uni yeah is it that you're a lawyer and you're a baker <laughs> you're a lawyer and you're an artist yeah you're a lawyer and you're a fashion designer yeah. you're a lawyer you're a photographer so it's like why do people study law if they don't actually stay there so i'm now beginning to think is this something that people just get forced into doing because yeah i know someone that in his entire family they're all lawyers and he's mm. like he never wanted to be a lawyer yeah. but his parents were like his mom is a lawyer his dad is a lawyer yeah. all his sisters so it's like the family is a law family yeah. so you must whether you like it or yeah. not and then i'm beginning to think like this is probably a separate conversation, conversation entirely yeah. but the whole influence of parents choosing career paths yeah. the influence that they have on them yeah. and also the consequences because at the end of the day people now get into phases where yeah you're in, like a part be a place in your life where yeah. you're not even sure what you're doing but like you said you feel very content, content and yeah. i'm sure you're very happy like you will never yeah, regret making yeah, that yeah i definitely not um, i was going to add that one of the things that made me take that gap year was that i got to a point where i was like hmm throughout my life every other person has been making decisions for me yeah. but me so first off your life is pretty much planned out you're in nursery school from there se- primary school from there yeah, secondary school from the school there you're going yeah so you just keep going like mm-hmm. there's a pattern that you're supposed to fit into mm-hmm. and you fit into that pattern so you just go with the flow but i now got to the point where i was like this isn't really what i want to do so, you needed to so do that yeah and and then yourself. to find that one thing for myself i needed to take a break from like Everything every other else. thing yeah so that's why i chose to do the gap here and that was when i even started learning that i have an interest in communications because mm-hmm. for me it was more i'm a creative writer that's it primarily mm-hmm. but i started you know exploring that channel and then i started doing things in communications Mm -hmm. i started a podcast um i started thinking of doing youtube i started editing videos editing pictures things like that so my creative passion opened the what's the door to see that i had interest in communications as yeah. well so like while you hate broadcasting i would love to be on tv one day or radio for sure like it's just something i would love to do right now i'm doing like the behind the scenes stuff i'm mm-hmm. writing um putting together scripts creative directing when so we're more shooting like the, um, what's it called all the background work that exactly comes yeah i'm doing all of that now and some of the front work as well mm-hmm. like i mean some videos for example at the office um but then i also do everything like behind the scenes mm-hmm. but that has taught me that i would love to be in front at some point and i understand that it's a journey yeah. and i think that's what makes it more exciting for me that's 
there's just so much more there's more steps on the ladder that i'll mm-hmm. get to climb mm-hmm. and that even though i'm just starting out now i literally came in like without knowing anything, anything. at all and so far you've and been able yeah to... i've been able to learn more and there's still so much more to learn yeah okay so as a communications person what i'll tell you is like i said earlier communications is broad we know that yeah so i think finding that particular area that you want to specialize in is key because it's like law now yeah like there's corporate laws commercial laws exactly people yeah. get to choose like their lawyers that don't ever want to enter the courts they yeah. just want to like do all the other stuff yeah, but exactly. enter the court yeah so i think in communications right you need to just know which parts you truly want to be in but for you yeah. to even get there you should have like experiences in almost everything, everything because yeah. that's what will give you the experience for yeah. you to now say okay i've done this i've done this i've done that and i feel like i thrive better here yeah. or i am more interested here yeah me now I'm, I'm popularly known for i think corporate communications and public relations yeah. but i can do marketing communications and almost every other thing yeah except broadcasting that i don't like <laughs> but funny enough i'm doing yeah it right now. you are but i think it's very important that you choose a niche for yeah. yourself so it doesn't stop you from being a that's why you're a specialist yeah it's not like that's the only thing you can do yeah but i've had you know instances where i was given opportunities but then you don't want to like exactly let it go yeah. because you're not saying no this is not what I like yeah, to do. Yeah. But it's still part of you being, yeah. if not for anything, it makes you very versatile. That yeah. people can see you as, that's truly a communications person. Because yeah. you're not restricted to just, you know, yeah. one thing, like one area. So I would say take your time. Yeah. No pressure. And it's good that you already have the passion. You yeah. enjoy what you've been doing. And yeah. as you grow, you're really like, you know, experiencing the entire process. Yeah. And just one day at a time but be very you know intentional about the task that you're given yeah. so that way you get to learn for yourself like okay today i wrote yesterday yeah. i was in charge of production yeah you know tomorrow i'm supposed to be doing this that way you know the one that you you know confidently yeah. just flow into and yeah. they wake you up from sleep you know that okay <laughs> I can do this at any time. This is yeah. what I truly... Because you can't just... You don't want to just be a generalist. Like, it's going to be quite yeah. confusing for you at some point. But yes, be a specialist, but still have experience in, in doing all, all the bits. Because yeah. imagine you're a manager tomorrow and you're leading teams. The goal is to own my own creative exactly. company. Exactly. So you yes, can't own so your own creative company when you don't even know knowing. how every other yeah. aspect works. So regardless of what you want to specialize in, yeah. I would say that you should just, you know be open to the opportunities and yeah, yeah you sound very i actually like that you're happy <laughs> welcome to communications thank you and but the yeah. creative part too to be fair yeah yeah there's still the creative parts which is exciting for me mm-hmm. so coming up with ideas there's is a lot of thinking. oh my god ideation alone is like quite the amount of work mm-hmm. but then coming up with the ideas and then seeing it come to fruition like you put all the work to make sure that you actually yeah, so execute it well yes. and execution yeah and implementation it's so stuff. nice it's like i worked on this like this this is my baby like i worked on this <laughs> and i'm doing customer it. journey mapping not yet okay. <laughs> soon, you know but yeah it's it's actually interesting yeah i don't think i've ever had a conversation like this with somebody in community communications yeah where we're actually like not exactly discussing the nitty-gritty yeah. but i mean just be speaking to someone that's as passionate yeah in the industry as yeah. you are so it's quite interesting it for is me. it is but yeah i'm sure you will do really good i like, hope you, so you will you actually look and sound like it so i'm very excited so the goal is i mean the most important part is just that you're doing what you love yeah like what you're passionate about like something is driving the passion yeah. so I think that that's really good. So I think we're pretty much rounding up. Yeah. So what would you tell somebody that is probably in a space where they're not exactly sure if that's what they want to do without even knowing like what the person does or what they want to like look at? Yeah. Like just someone that is in that state of, you know, where I am right now, is this where I want to be? How do I know if I have a passion? Like yeah. what would you just, if someone is speaking and just talking about how they don't love their job or what they do, they're yeah. confused and they want to find themselves like, what word of advice would you give them based on your own experience? Yeah. Based on my own experience, I'll say if you have the opportunity, mm-hmm. take a break. Okay. There's a lot don't. of... Huh. 
<laughs> if you don't, I will say pace yourself. Mm-hmm. Try and take as many little breaks as you can since you can't take a big one. Yeah. Because there's a lot of noise and a lot of external advice. And the truth is, it's not coming from people that hate you. It's coming from people that genuinely care about you and want the best for you. Mm-hmm. But if you don't know what you want for yourself, yeah, you won't even much. know where to go. So mm-hmm. you need to take like as many little breaks as you can or that big break and mm-hmm. say, okay, what do I want? Where do I see myself? What makes me happy? What makes me confident? What makes me content? Mm-hmm. What makes me say, yes, I'm doing my own thing and I'm proud of what I'm doing? Yeah. Because it gets overwhelming. All the noise, all the expectations, the responsibilities. So mm-hmm. it's good that you take that break and just say, let me pause. Let's just take it. Everybody, let's just and pause. Figure yeah, and figure it out. Yeah. Ah, man. Thank you very much. Thank you too. This has been very insightful. And yeah. like I said, it's just exciting having it a conversation is. with someone <laughs> that not just has a... I can literally see like yeah. the passion <laughs> from the way that you're speaking. Yeah. And I'm very sure that you do great in the industry. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations in advance. Let's just do yes. that. Yeah. All right. So thank you for listening and watching and i hope that you learned something from this thank you blessing thank for you for coming too. on the show can i plug myself sure shameless plug let me see so the name of my creative outlet is the authoress ng and mm-hmm. you can follow us on instagram at hope the that's authoress your personal NG. one though. don't come and promote anybody's company on my show no it's my <laughs> it's mine no blessings mm-hmm. zone. yeah yeah okay. the authoress ng yeah all right so guys support her creative and communications journey as you heard she's just yeah. starting now and it's something she's truly really passionate about so thank you guys again for watching and listening and i'll see you guys on the next one <laughs> <laughs>